The eighth episode of The Last of Us was the episode that I was looking forward to the most. I made a video a long time ago about the most important scene that the show has to adapt, and this was long before we ever got a trailer. I think it was before even Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey were cast, and I think that they did a really great job with that scene in this episode. But there were a lot of other reasons that I was looking forward to this episode too. David, Joel's interrogation scene, the differences that the show was going to have, and I really think that this was the best episode of the season so far. So in today's video, I'm going to go over those reasons, why I liked this episode so much, and some of the changes that I liked and didn't like. So let's dive into episode 8 of The Last of Us. There have been a lot of characters adapted from the game, but I always thought that the most important character to adapt and get right, other than Joel and Ellie of course, was David, and Scott Shepard did an amazing job in this role. He was equal parts terrifying and psychotic, and in a completely different way than David in the game was, and that's really everything that you can ask for in an adaptation. We start the episode off thinking that he's this faithful leader, doing his part to keep everybody in his commune alive, with no real downsides in the scene. He talks to Troy Baker's James, who I'll get to in a second, and asks if he's still with him and still has faith in what they're doing, and you can't help but wonder what he's actually talking about. Throughout the episode, he has this very calming presence, like he's genuinely someone you can trust, but the longer it goes on, the more terrifying and sick it gets. In the game, there just always seemed like there was something off about David, you were just kind of waiting for something to go wrong, but in the show, I wonder if I would have even realized that this David dude was a bad guy if I didn't already know. For all you show-only watchers, let me know what your initial thoughts on David were, because I'm genuinely curious. I've seen a lot of people say, well, when he slaps that little girl, how can all the others just sit there and stay with this guy? But what else are they supposed to do? They clearly aren't fighters or even capable survivors, so David is kind of their best shot at surviving because most of these people wouldn't last a day out in the cold. And this is a pretty great change in the show to see things from David's point of view at the beginning. I'm not sure if in the game David is also a preacher or runs a town with women and children in it. I don't really think he was, but if he was, then we only ever heard about it and we never saw it. When they start serving the food and we're told it's venison, as an audience we're hoping that they already brought the deer back and that's what they're eating, but then David and James walk in with the deer and everybody continues absolutely devouring their food. I looked over to my girlfriend and asked her if she knew what they were eating, and she had no idea. Me knowing what they were eating and the scene itself maybe makes this the most sickening scene in the episode, but also maybe not, and that just proves how dark this episode really was. This was certainly the most HBO episode of the show, and an episode like this really proves why you need to have a show like this on HBO in order to actually do the story justice, and this episode did that and then some. But there are a few people in the room who do know what's going on, one of them is James. Of all the additional characters the show has created, James has to be up there as one of my favorites. Am I a little biased because it's Troy Baker, aka Joel from the game? Yeah, probably, but whatever, I found James to be very interesting. He's very clearly troubled with the things that David is doing, but also doesn't know what else to do. Could he leave and survive on his own? Yeah, probably, I'm not saying that James is a good dude by any means, but he very clearly still has a conscience about what's going on and how none of it is right. He didn't want to bring Ellie back because she's just another mouth to feed, but was that the sole reason? Or did he know what David's plans were and wanted to show her mercy by killing her? James said something to David about David's mercy, so I'm under the impression that James did know what was going to happen and he wanted to stop it. Either he really did care about the people in the town and wanted what was best for them, or he didn't want David to have Ellie. 
There's also a moment when they're all eating that James kind of gags on his food for a moment, and these little things added a lot to James's character. I half wish that James just up and left the commune when David went to go and get him, and he would somehow show up in Jackson in season two, maybe become a recurring role in that season. That would have been a really cool show-only storyline to add a redemption arc of James, but that's also a double-edged sword, asking for a lot of changes to be made, so his death was pretty good in my book. I really think that a lot of James is open to interpretation, but at the end of the day, Ellie killed Joel, and that's kind of funny to think about. One of the biggest scenes I was looking forward to was Joel's interrogation of the two thugs. And I might go as far as to say that this was my favorite scene adapted from the game so far. In the show, Joel hasn't killed nearly as many people as he did in the game, for obvious reasons, but I think Joel has killed like three, maybe four people so far, so he basically doubled his body count in this episode, and that makes this scene stand out that much more than it did in the game. In the game, this was still a look into Joel's dark past and what he would do for Ellie, but the show emphasizes it that that much more. And these two goons that Joel killed put on a really great performance. I don't know if they had names or anything, but they did a really good job selling the fact that Joel is murdering people that they know, and they're terrified of him. This is definitely one of my favorite scenes in the game, so I'm really happy to see that the show did it justice. It was basically like a one-for-one -one recreation. Pedro's Joel did the exact same things that Troy Baker's Joel did, so for all the people like me who have been asking for one-to-one -one recreations of scenes from the game, we finally got one. And now I feel like I say this every week, but Bella Ramsey put on their greatest performance yet with this episode. And this really was the big scene for Ellie out of the entire game, so Bella absolutely killed it and I look forward to next week, but definitely season 2 to see what they're going to do in that story. A lot of people weren't sold on Bella Ramsey as Ellie in the beginning. I certainly wasn't, but I also said I was going to see how they play Ellie and decide from there, and after this episode, I'm completely sold. I say it every week, Bella Ramsey did a great job this week, better performance this week, so I'm done saying that. I don't think that there's any other actor their age that could have done this role. Bella Ramsey is Ellie for me. So now I get to what I believe to be the most important scene in the entire game, and that's Joel and Ellie's reunion and all the stuff that came before it. I saw this on the inside the episode, but I've also seen it said about the game, but we're all expecting Joel to be the one to come in at the last second and save Ellie from David, but that's not what happens. This scene sets up the path that Ellie's gonna go down. Ellie is the one that has to defend herself. She's the one that has to take matters into her own hands. And having Joel not come in to save her is one of the finest examples of subverting expectations that I can think of. Because it doesn't take away any importance from the scene. In fact, I think it adds to it. This moment changes Ellie forever, while also showing that Joel is there to care for Ellie because he comforts her when he sees her again calling her baby girl just like he did to his own daughter. This moment adds to both of these characters while subverting the normal tropes of scenes like this, and that's about as good as you can wish for. Is this scene exactly like it was in the game? No, do I wish that at least the same music would have been used and how Joel's words would have been cut out like it was in the game? Yes, I do, but these are very minor complaints and really just nitpicks, so I'm not too angry about it. Overall, this episode delivered everything that I wanted it to. We had some good changes from the source material, iconic scenes that were adapted very well, and amazing performances all around. I'm looking forward to next week's finale. If you are too, let me know that by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribe for more Last of Us content. If you do, then I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.